Welcome to the R video tutorial on confidence intervals on the mean. This is for Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody's free to use it. All right, so we're going to switch focus here to confidence intervals. And the idea of a confidence interval is we're answering a different kind of question than for a hypothesis test. For a hypothesis test, we're interested in, uh, I wonder if the value is less than, equal to, or greater than some specific known value. The confidence interval, you're approaching the problem of, I don't know what the value might be. With the hypothesis test, you actually have a value in mind. Confidence interval, no idea what it might be. So that's the goal is, what is the value? So we're going to make an interval to capture the value uh, of a parameter. And we want to use an interval versus just a point because intervals can be right way more often than a point can be. So uh, what we want to do is get a confidence interval that captures the value of the parameter. That's our goal. Find out what it might be. Uh, we want the interval to be as short as possible. Uh, we want the interval to have a good success rate in the sense of if we were to use the method over and over and over and over again, how often does it actually capture the right value? Also, uh, we want to be able to control the rate of success. And uh, this is what we're going to do with a confidence interval. And it's not that difficult. So here's the basic idea. If n is large enough and we have uh, x1 through xn as a simple random sample from our population, then this t statistic is approximately a t distribution. So we can use this. So uh, our goal is to come up with an interval that are two numbers, a and b, such that the following is true, where c is our confidence interval. So what we do is we use the, pro the test statistic that we had before, that t, and just solve it for mu. And that's basically it. And if you want to run down to the algebra, here it is. We know that, uh, in general, this is true. That this confidence, which is going to be a number between 0 and 1, uh, you can find these two numbers on the ends for our value t. Substitute the t we had above in here. Cross multiply with the s divided by the square root of n. And we end up with x bar minus mu in the middle. And then just move the x bars to each side so that notice one side will be negative and one side will be positive uh, when we do this. So it's pretty easy to pull this off. Um, and we end up with the standard formula that we're used to down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to R and see how this works and see what we mean by the idea of confidence. So open up R and we'll jump over there. Okay, we've jumped over to R, and now we want to look at this via simulation. So the first thing I need to do is define my population. What am I actually going to sample from? So right now I have mu is equal to 10. Uh, my standard deviation that I'm going to use is 2. And the sample size right now is 100, and I'm going to comment this off here as sample size, because we might want to change that to see if anything changes later. Uh, so here's our sample size, and we're going to make that 100. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a simulation where we're going to be able to plot the actual confidence intervals that are generated. So, so since we're going to be dealing with a plot, we're going to do plot first. And then here I'm going to put null. Okay, I want an empty blank plot. And what I want to do is put on my x limit is, well, this is probably going to only need to go between, um, let's say, like, Let's just do 0 to 20 right now, and we can change it. Uh, y is going to go from 0 to 100. Uh, so I'll, the reason we're going to do that is we're going to run this 100 times, and we want to plot these lines on here on a plot so we can see when it works and when it doesn't. So this is our first thing, and I forgot to put the 0 here. We've got a null plot that we can work with. Um, let's run this, make sure we get a null plot that actually has what we want. And sure enough, here is a plot with nothing in it, which is exactly what we wanted. Notice it goes from 0 to 20, and this side actually goes from 0 to 100. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a for loop. Uh, I in 1 to 100. And I'm going to do something that I usually don't do, which is not actually uh, make a container, because here my container is actually the picture. I'm going to put lines on the picture. And that, so just keep that in mind. I did create a container, and it's actually the plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is take x1, and I'm going to sample it from a normal distribution. So let's say I have a normal distribution, r norm. I'm going to pull 
my sample size and one of them from there with a mean of my population and a standard deviation of my population. That's going to pull that for me. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, do, I'm going to call this test one and I'm going to do T dot test and I'm going to put X one in it because T test, T dot test actually has a T test in it and it generates confidence intervals, which is what I care about. And the great thing is, is I can put a dollar sign on here and do conf int. I believe that will work. Uh, we can try it out if you want to see if it works. So now that we've entered this other stuff, I get X1, and then I can run test1. And if I look at text one, test1, one, you can see that it has two numbers, one and two. These are my confidence intervals. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually do what's called segments. I want to do a segment, and it's going to be a graphic. And if we want to understand how to use segments, always hit question mark and type in segments. And what it does is it adds a line segment to a plot. Okay? So I need to put in X0, Y0, X1, Y1. Once I've done that, it'll work. So let's do that here real quick. So X0 is going to be my lower bound here, because I'm going to make stack up this thing vertically. It's going to be my lower bound, which is um, of my confidence interval, which would be T test, or my test one, uh, and it's the first entry. And then it's going to go to, well, I need the Y value for it. And then in this case, I'm going to use I. Okay, so it'll plot it on the first row of my plot here. And then my next one, my X1, is test 1, 2, and again, I'm going to plot it on the same thing. And then I'm going to do the color equals right now green. So if I do this, this should start plotting segments on my plot. And we'll see if it works. And you can zoom in, and you can see here are all these confidence intervals that it made. Now, notice that my X limits are way off. And so what I want to do is actually go back and change it, because I said right now I don't know where it'll be. So let's just make it go from 5 to 15. So we'll come up here, we'll make this go from 5, we'll make this go to 15, and we're going to add one other thing to this. We're going to add a B line. Okay, and it's going to be vertical, and it's going to be at mu naught. Okay, and I'm going to make the color equals red or blue. How about blue? Okay, now when I do this, hopefully this will be zoomed in some where we can see it. Um, maybe I should do the, this line outside of it. Okay, uh, get rid of it here. Even here you can see I could go between 8 and 12 if I wanted to. So let's do that. 8 and 12. Give this a run. And what do we see? We see here are intervals. There's a whole bunch of intervals. There's actually a hundred of them stacked up here. And this blue line is the actual true value. And we can look at this and we can see where this actually captured it. So like this interval right here did not hit this blue line. It did not intersect with it. This one here did not intersect with that blue line. But a lot of them do intersect. Uh, here's another one that didn't intersect with the blue line. So these are examples that the interval did not actually capture the true value. And that's kind of the idea that we're looking for here is that we are looking for a method that works correctly most of the time, as much as possible. And uh, right now, our confidence level is 95% because that's what the default is in t-test. Uh, t dot test. Uh, so what we can do now, if we really want to get funky with this and play around with it, we can actually test this to see whether or not we end up in the right place and actually have it put on green ones for when we hit it and red ones when we don't. So we're going to save that till our next video, but in that we're going to learn about the if statement and the else statement so that we can actually plot this. So uh, when we move to the next one, uh, just be aware we're going to pick up right where we left off.